Welcome to round three of the Parenting Roundabout podcast for the week of November 11th. I'm Terry Morrow, and I'm here with Nicole Eredix. Hello. And Catherine Haleko. Hello. We're moms of teens and young adults, and when it comes to parenting, we've been there, done that, and bought the t-shirt. But we're still waiting for the day when we'll reach the finish line and have no further need to lay down in a dark room with a wet rag over our eyes, worrying about something or other. Wednesday is complaint day here on Parenting Roundabout, and today we're complaining about our kids' annoying habits. And in a Parallel Universe podcast, our kids are complaining about (laughs) our annoying habits. But this is not that podcast. Um... We uh, saw an article in the New York Times uh, about the annoying habits of preschoolers and how you should treat them and how scolding them is not the way to do that. And I sort of generally agree with that. We used some very uh, positive reinforcement uh, techniques on my son when he was younger, and it was very helpful, though I don't know if it was so much for habits as for behaviors that we wanted to change. I don't know. Maybe there's no difference between those two things when you're talking about preschoolers. For older kids, I don't know if there's a way to get rid of annoying habits that is not equally annoying. Right. And, you know, I, I've gotten a few times from a child who who was language delayed for a number of years and has been having amazing catch up to the point where she knows all the buzzwords. And she accused me of triggering her when I mentioned <laughs> an annoying <laughs> habit. So I'm like... Oh, darn. So then your positive reinforcement is <laughs> great vocabulary. Exactly. I may actually have said that. Wow, you've picked up that word. Good for you. Do not use it on me. <laughs> so um, how do you guys handle annoying habits? Do your kids have annoying habits or are they perfect? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> how did you handle them when the kids were little? I don't know. I don't remember that much about when they were I mean there were you know like they both one sucked a thumb one sucked a pacifier like that's a habit I guess but that's I don't think that's really what we're talking about here um Mm -hmm. and in both cases anyway I had almost no luck (laughs) dealing with those things right the pacifier we did the pacifier you know the kid was three which is many people would say is way too old but if you wait until they're three and then you conveniently forget to bring it with you on a trip Mm -hmm. then game over it's problem problem solved so (laughs) yes waiting for the right time is a large part of yeah getting those things done yeah timing is definitely key yeah well i can't say as i've i think i had better luck dealing with my kids' annoying behavior when they were younger as opposed to now when they're older. <laughs> right. Because yeah. nothing seems to work for my son when I ask him to turn off the light in mm-hmm. the in the bathroom or turn off the light in the kitchen or turn off the light in the pantry. He d- it's just constant. And I've tried everything. I've, like, left <laughs> notes. I've <laughs> reprimanded him. I've tried to use positive reinforcement and the kid just like every light in the house is 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 on and and going and he just trying to break my mom of the uh, annoying habit of asking me to turn off the lights by leaving them on he's winning (laughs) it's not fair (laughs) (laughs) i just don't know what else to do anymore (laughs) drives me crazy so put the put the room the lights in his his room and his bathroom like on a timer so that like they can only be on at certain times and then they just Uh, turn off. You know what? That's a really good idea. You (laughs) you you can get those timers now that you can control through your phone. Right. You can put them on and off at all different random times. Yeah. Well, then you have to get a special light bulb, but then that requires a special outlet, I think. Ah. Yeah. It's always something. So... I know. Yeah, but that you might just be... take the light out. <laughs> Unscrew so the bulb. <laughs> Every time there's a light left on, just take out the bulb and pocket yeah. it. Because <laughs> it of needs course, to be you like can't an... use that room, but it, ne- it needs to be a natural consequence, right? Isn't that right. the best way to to correct uh-huh. unne- uh-huh. you know behavior that's undesirable? Now, don't <laughs> replace right. the bulbs when they burn out. Make him do it. If it's his, yeah. it's his money, he'll take better care of it. Yeah, but then these bulbs have like four million hours of life. So oh. 
can you can you figure out what percentage of the electric bill is from him leaving the lights on? Well, and that's the bill? next step. That because you know I feel like hitting the wallet hurts the most. So yes, yes, yes. invoice him for kilowatt hours used. Yeah. So that's my next step. But oh, it drives me crazy. Yeah. And my daughter, well, she hasn't been home for two months, so I don't really feel like there's anything to complain about right now. But. Well, that's one way to handle an annoying habit. Right. It's like yeah. send the kids someplace Ship else. Ship her off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that this, this article, you know, talked a lot about how positive reinforcement is really the only way to go. And mm-hmm. as you said, Terry, I mean, I generally agree with that. And... Um, especially when kids are younger, but you know, when they're old enough to just basically be told like, right, stop that, you know, it, you wished that that would be effective. <laughs> yeah. Habits are hard though. It's hard for us to change habits. Yeah, sure it is. You're there right. needs a little, we've, my son's most annoying habit is something that has been ongoing really pretty much his entire life, which is that. I well, he has always like sucked his fingers, mm-hmm. and it's it's advanced now to he also picks the skin off his fingers at some point to the point where he bleeds, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it drives me crazy when he's doing it. When he's you know I'm driving him to work and he's sucking his fingers and then he's picking his fingers and then he's and it's like you're going to work where you're going to handle garbage and people's soiled linens at this hotel with hands that have open wounds on them. This this concerns me for many health right. reasons. And I try to tell him about, you know, flesh-eating bacteria and all sorts of horrible things that could happen. And he's like, that's eh, not going to happen, Mom. And it's like, well, but just stop. Right. I can hear yeah. you doing it. I can hear the slurping and I can hear the picking and I just stop. Right. But yeah. when when he was very young, when he was like in in kindergarten, uh, his, his paraprofessional came upon this great idea that if she put wet wipes on his hands... He would not suck his fingers because I guess they didn't taste good. And, well, everybody had a party. We broke the bad habit. Except then his behavior took a tremendous nosedive. Oh. So because mm. he didn't have that comforting thing, he right. was just acting up and he was completely unable to focus. And it's by the end of the year, I said, you know what? Let him suck the fingers. You know, right. if, it, right. if, his, if that one thing keeps his behavior and focused and he can learn and he's not annoying other people, maybe we make that trade off. Uh-huh. Didn't think it was going to last till he was 26. <laughs> but right. Apparently it has. I don't know if he does it in the presence of other people or just me or just when he's home. It's just a comfort activity. But I just, at this point, I don't think there's any way to stop it. I told him I'm going to make him wear gloves in the car. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I have the, the might to back up that directive. Right. right. And like you said, if he needs it as a comfort, then yeah, there that's has to what be I would some kind about. of benign substitution. But Maybe what if you take up be? smoking or something. I know. Take care of it. <laughs> that's why I said benign, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's what I would worry about if I if I forced him to not do it then is am I dropping him off at work in a in a stressed out right. state. Right. Right. So, uh, you know, I do worry about the health concerns about having bleeding wounds on your hands when you're doing manual labor, but uh, probably he's right that it's not gonna. But probably <laughs> You know, yeah. you take this bottle of hand sanitizer with you and put it on every five minutes, will you? Right. Or wear. Can he wear can like? Wear can he wear gloves? Like, um, I don't think he can. I mean, well, I mean, it's not part of his uniform, as far as I know. Right. So it would be like a "Why are you wearing these?" and he would not necessarily know how to explain. Well, my mother is a crazy woman. Maybe that explanation right. would. My mom do. said I have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Talk to her. But so there's a habit that was not, many educators would say was not properly addressed in the youth that has gone on to be a problem. But I mean, I do think it is very similar to why people smoke or why Mm -hmm. people eat or why, you know, it's that oral comfort. uh, Yeah, it's just a comfort thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. And uh, very, very, very difficult to break. Yeah. Yeah. So I have no. Yeah, this (laughs) is why I did. Stories to, to, to contribute to this topic. This is why my child sucked their thumb until they were eight. Yeah. You know, because it's because I did when yeah. I was a kid. And right. 
you know, it's, I, yeah. um, I just remember, I feel like I might have told this story before, but I just remember being at the dentist's office with a thumb sucking child and a brand new baby, like oh. weeks old. And uh-huh. they're like, really have to work on this thumb thing. I'm like, <laughs> Right now, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Not a high priority there. Yeah. yeah. Just had a baby. The kid just became an older sibling. Like, no, we're not, we're not yeah. doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think that's a really good point is the timing of when, you know, when we're trying to deal with these habits and yeah. is it the right time and is it the most effective time to, right. to uh, work on what's going on? You'd be like, I mean, yeah, even today... Five. Even today, like, you know, I have one child who's terrible about things like leaving dirty dishes around or stuff Mm -hmm. like that. But it's like in the grand scheme of things, so much else they're doing right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Absolutely. And there's so much else going on that it doesn't seem like a priority. Mm-hmm. Right. I hear that. Right. I think it's definitely yeah. you want to choose your battles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we hope that um, you don't consider listening to this podcast annoying <laughs> habit. <laughs> a habit, keep it yes. <laughs> yes. Make it, make it a habit. A good, Please make it habit. a good habit. Yes. <laughs> Listen to us. We have five podcasts a week, and um, this is one of them. So... <laughs> Uh, we're going to wrap this one up right now too, actually, because that's it for today's round three. And we are going to have you or ask that you tune in tomorrow when we'll obsess about keeping up with trends and then come back on Friday to see what we've come up with for our roundabout roundup picks this week. Find all our episodes at parentingroundabout.com and talk back in the comments there on our Facebook page or on Twitter, where you'll find us at roundabout chat. 